What's up everyone, Lukande Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking secrets in Kubernetes. I've done a previous video talking about application configuration in K8s with config maps and secrets, and that was just to acquaint you with the basics if you're totally new to these resources. In this video, I'll be talking about how you can make use of sealed secrets and the external secrets operator, and why you should be considering these tools in the first place. Using secrets with default configurations in Kubernetes is not a good strategy. There are a number of inherent risks that exist around them, most of which stem from the fact that, by default, secrets are stored in a non-encrypted format in the etcd data store. This introduces the challenge of being able to safely store secret manifests in repositories, private or public. Some security measures that can be taken include things like encrypting the secrets, using centralized secrets managers, limiting the administrative access to the cluster, enabling encryption of your data at rest in the cluster data store, enabling TLS and SSL between the data store and the pods, among other things. In this video, I'll cover how to use sealed secrets for one-way encryption of your Kubernetes secrets, as well as how to securely access and expose sensitive data as secrets from centralized secret management systems with the external secrets operator. That's a whole lot of secrets. One of the key advantages of infrastructure as code is that it allows teams to store their configuration scripts and manifests inside of Git repositories. However, because of the nature of Kubernetes secrets, this is a huge risk. The original sensitive credentials and values can easily be derived from Base64 encoding. A secure workaround is to use sealed secrets. Now, as I mentioned before, sealed secrets allow for one-way encryption of your Kubernetes secrets and can only be decrypted by the sealed secrets controller running in your target cluster. This mechanism is based on public key encryption, which is a form of cryptography that consists of a public key and a private key pair. One can be used for encryption and only the other key can be used to decrypt what was encrypted. The controller will generate the key pair and publish the public key certificate to the logs, as well as expose it over an HTTP API request. To make use of sealed secrets, you have to deploy the controller to your target cluster and download the kubeseal CLI tool. The sealed secrets controller is a component that extends the Kubernetes API and enables lifecycle operations of your sealed secrets in the cluster. The kubeseal CLI tool is a tool that uses the generated public key certificate to encrypt your secret into a sealed secret. Now, once generated, the sealed secret manifest can be stored in a Git repo or shared publicly without any ramifications. When you create these sealed secrets in your cluster, the controller will decrypt it and retrieve the original secret, making it available in your cluster as per norm. Let's take a look at this in action. All right, so I'm in my terminal and I've already downloaded the controller for sealed secrets. So what I'm gonna do now is proceed to create that inside of my cluster. So Create controller.yaml because it's already inside the specific folder that I'm in. This will take a couple of minutes. Great. Uh, all the resources have been created. So what I'm going to do next is just double check to make sure that the pod is running as expected. Awesome. So as a next step, I'm going to fetch the public a key certificate that has actually been generated. I'm going to use kubeseal for that. And I'm going to run the fetch cert command. And you can just simply run cat command on that just to see that I have it. And once that is done, the next thing for me to do is to actually seal a secret using kubeseal. First off, I'm going to cat command a secret here that you can see very basic i've just got two properties under data it's username and password the username is actually just user and the password is password and i've just base 64 encoded that which is very insecure but um provided this was a real world scenario um once those are base 64 encoded the next step would be for you to actually go ahead and seal this so i'm going to run cube seal And once that is done, I can then have a look at the generated sealed secret. And as you can see, the data has now been encrypted for my secret. So this can actually be shared publicly, as I mentioned earlier, and it would be totally safe for your secrets and sensitive values.
So all I have to do now, since the controller is actually already running inside of my target cluster, is I need to create this resource inside of my Kubernetes cluster, and the controller will be able to decrypt it and make it available as a secret normally. Great, so my sealed secret has been created. And so what I'm going to do now is to actually check if there is a secret existing in my cluster called my secret. And there we go. So if I actually want to fetch the values for this, I can simply run the kubectl get secret command. As you can see over there, if I want to fetch the property user. There we go. So I'm able to get the actual value as well. Another good practice for managing your secrets in Kubernetes is to make use of centralized secrets managers. Secrets managers are hosted third-party platforms that are used to securely store your sensitive data. These platforms typically offer encryption of your data at rest and expose an API for lifecycle management operations, such as creating, reading, updating, deleting, or rotating secrets. In addition, they have audit logs for trails and visibility, as well as fine-grained access control for operations of your stored secrets. Examples of secrets managers include HashiCorp Vault, AWS Secrets Manager, IBM Secrets Manager, Azure Key Vault, Google Secrets Manager, and the list goes on. Now, such systems can put organizations in a better position when it comes to centralizing the management, auditing, and securing of their secrets. So the next question is, how do you get secrets from these kinds of platforms into Kubernetes? And the answer to that question is the external secrets operator. The external secrets operator is a Kubernetes operator that enables you to integrate and read values from your external secrets management systems and insert them as secrets into your cluster. The SO extends the Kubernetes API with the following main API resources. You've got the secret store, and this is a namespace resource that determines how your external secret will be accessed from an authentication perspective. It contains references to secrets that have the credentials to access the external API. In addition, there is the cluster secret store. As the name implies, this is a global or cluster-wide secret store that can be referenced from all namespaces to provide a central gateway to your secrets manager. And then third, we have the external secret. And this resource declares the data that you actually want to fetch from the external secrets manager. It will reference the secret store so that it knows how to access sensitive data. Let's take a look at how to use the external secrets operator with AWS Secrets Manager. And I know, that's a whole lot of the word secrets. As you can see, I am in my AWS uh, console and I've created a secret in Secrets Manager called alias and the values as you can see over here, are first, which is a key for the value alpha, and I've got second, which has the value beta. So these are very basic, but what I want to do is be able to actually inject this secret, and specifically the value properties, into my Kubernetes cluster and be able to access it as a normal secret. Now, very important is one of the methods for authenticating uh, when trying to access these values um, via the exposed API is to create an external um, secrets I am user, at least that's what I'm calling it, but basically an I am user with programmatic access, and that will generate an access key ID and an access uh, secret key. And so these particular values you will need to add in the secret that you will be creating um, in your Kubernetes cluster. And then very important is you wanna make sure that you attach the right kind of permissions for, to that particular user. And so as you can see over here, this is the policy that allows me to be able to carry out certain operations um, on resources inside of Secrets Manager. You can narrow this down even further by specifying it or by adding this policy to a specific role and then attaching that to the user. In this case, I'm just working with the user and the policy. I'm gonna switch over now to my terminal. And in here, I'm gonna start off by adding the relevant Helm repo. I've already done this, so as you can see, it already exists, but just so you're aware of the step that has to be followed. And then the next thing is to actually install the external secrets operator inside of the external secrets namespace inside of my cluster. Great, and now that that has been deployed, um, the next step is to actually create the secret that contains the credentials for my IAM user. 
And so I'm just gonna quickly run a cat command here so you see exactly what this looks like, I'm calling it secret for aws.yaml. And as you can see over there, these are the values for my access key ID and my secret access key, and they're just base64 encoded. So you could actually follow the step that I showed previously uh, by actually sealing this if you did want to store it inside of a Git repository. And so to do that, you would run the cube seal command. And I'm just going to update this to be specific for AWS. And there we go. So if I was to run a cat command on the sealed secret for AWS. As you can see, that has now been encrypted. And then the following step will be for me to create the secret store and the external secret. But let's have a look at these in particular. Great, so as you can see, um, as I mentioned, the secret store essentially takes care of how the relevant values will be accessed. So it's going to reference the secret um, that will be created. In this case, I have sealed that particular secret, but it is referencing it. And as you can see over here, the name of that secret um, is AWS SM secret. And I wanna be, I wanna access the access key ID and the same thing, say the secret access key for that particular, in that particular secret. And as you can see over here, just um, some of the additional properties for the particular provider because I'm working with AWS Secrets Manager. And so that gets specified over here. You can also add the role property in the case that you wanted to narrow that down even further. Next up, let's take a look at the external secret resource. And so inside of the external secret resource, as you can see, I'm just um, under the metadata, I'm providing it with that name, but I wanna, wanna draw what I want to draw your attention to is the secret store that I'm referencing is the one that I just showed you. As you can see the name over there, AWS SM secret store and specify the kind of that particular resource. Um, the target being the secret that I want to actually have created inside of my Kubernetes cluster. So that secret that will be created that will contain these properties pulled from my secrets manager will be called alias secret. And under the data, you'll be able to see this is where you actually populate the relevant um, key value pairs. And so you'll see over here that I want to have the um, values taken from the secret key first, as well as second, which was those specific keys specified under the secret values in secrets manager. And then you'll notice over here that the remote references is referring to the key, which is the actual secret called alias, and then the property is first. And so um, that is how those values will be injected into this particular secret. So just pulling that data, and then that will be created. Um, these data properties will essentially be created inside alias secret. So now that we've seen those, the last thing that is left for me to do is to actually create them. And I'm just going to chain the command over here. Great, and all those resources have been created. And so um, what I wanna see now is to check whether the target secret was actually created. So I'm gonna fetch um, secret alias secret. Let's see if this actually exists inside of my Kubernetes cluster, and you can see that it does. So what I'm gonna do next is to actually see if I can get the value per second over here, which should be beta, and there we go. So I'm able to access um, those specific values from my external secrets manager. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.